Hi, everyone. I'm Paul with Madcap Software. Let's talk about a couple of really cool features in Flare. Something that you're going to set up maybe once or rarely, but then you're going to use this stuff all the time. I'm talking about hotkeys and macros. So hotkeys, shortcut keys on your keyboard to uh, do all kinds of things. And you can customize that. And then macros, recording specific actions, and you can assign shortcut keys to those actions as well. So let's go in to Flare and uh, let's start with hotkeys. All right, so I'm sure that you know that there are just standard shortcut keys that uh, people use all the time. Control A to select all the text, Control C to copy, Control V to paste, right? And those shortcut keys of, are, of course, available when you're working in Madcap Flare, along with lots of others. There are lots of um, shortcut keys that are just associated by default out of the box with a lot of different uh, Flare UI or Flare actions. So let's go to the File Options uh, dialog. Okay, and what this is showing you is it's showing all of these different uh, actions, options that uh, already have shortcut keys associated with them. Let's kind of start up here at the top. It says Command Scope. You've got Global and you've got XML Editor. Right now it's on Global, which means this is all kinds of stuff. Uh, so you might be working uh, you know, in, a, in an editor or you might just be opening um, a piece of the UI, like the project organizer here. And there's the shortcut key that goes with the project organizer. And then over on the right are all of these key assignments. So as you are changing things, uh, associating uh, keys with a particular action or you know, thing that you want to open, um, you would select it over here. And then come down here, you can actually modify these. Uh, by adding a control key or a shift key or alt key or a combination of them to something. So for example, move up as alt shift up on it. Now, something that's really useful in this is that you can sort by the columns in here. So sometimes I'll be looking for a particular uh, option, an action, a piece of the UI, or I might want to sort by the shortcut to see if I'm already using something. So you just click on that, and of course, that moves into alphabetical order on the option side, so I can quickly go find something there, or click shortcut, and it switches, and now I can see things according to the shortcut keys. So uh, something else that's, that's really useful is this field down here. This is going to let you know when you select something up here in the grid, it's going to let you know if, hey, you've already got, you've got other commands, not just this one, that has that shortcut key. All right, so let's say that I select this one that has control B. All right, and as soon as I select that, you see that, hey, there's other things that are associated with that, uh, that control, that uh, shortcut. So just know that when you're in a particular part of Flare and you use that, it may not, it may not do the thing that you think it's going to do. So sometimes I will uh, try to make sure that whatever uh, the action is that I do a lot. It's the only thing that has that, uh, sh that shortcut. So maybe one of the things that you want to do is uh, change the shortcut keys that are associated with something or, um, or set it to none or assign something new to something else. So let's, uh, let's go do that. Let's go and let's see, let's uh, sort here. Let's go down and just look. Um, all right, Snippet. Snippet has control R. So what that does is when you're in the editor and you press uh, control R, it's gonna bring up the insert snippet dialog. And you might be looking at this going, you know, I don't know that I'll use this control R thing. So you select it. And then over here on the right, you can just come up and select none. And uh, so it says control none, because I still have this modifier in here, so I can remove that. Okay, so I remove that, and uh, now it just is associated with none. There's nothing on there. So now I'm actually looking up here and going quick replace. Oh, that has 
control H and that's that little widget when you're in the in an editor and it will let you quickly find and replace text that's just in that open file and I actually use that a lot maybe I'm looking at this going you know control H now that I've gotten rid of control R or control uh, control R that might make more sense up here because that R goes with replace and so I decide okay I'll just select that and then I can change that. Right now it has H selected and I can come down on the right and select R. All right, so that's changed. Now I'm going to use that. Another thing to notice is unlisted commands down here. So there's all kinds of stuff in here. And uh, may maybe everything that you do most often is it's got it's already got a shortcut key, but maybe there's something that is um, a command an action that you don't have uh, a shortcut key assigned with. And so you can select this and look through. Oh, wow, there's all this stuff in here. OK, so you can select one of those things and add it to the grid and associate a shortcut key with that. Now, I am on the this global scope and. Uh, it, you can also click this and select XML editor. So the grid changes. And this is a list of commands in here that are just unique to the XML editor when you're working in there. So you can see all the things uh, that you might do when you're in the XML editor. And some of these are the same that you saw over in, uh, in the global thing. Now, notice I switched over and the snippet is right back where it was. And so that might be because I didn't click OK on, on the other one, or the XML editor is just treated differently from the global settings. But I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click a snippet and I'm going to change it in here. All right, so it's selected. I'm going to remove the control uh, key modifier in here. And there it goes. And so now I'm just going to replace that with none. All right, so that one is set and I'll come up here to quick, my quick replace because that one is back uh, where it started too. So I'm gonna select that. All right, now I am just going to quickly just change that to R down here. All right, that's changed. Now I'm just gonna click okay. And that changes my settings and that is gonna carry across all of my projects. It's just a personal thing. Uh, for me, the way that I work as opposed to uh, another author on the team, you know, so they'll have their preferences, I would have mine. That's, uh, that's the way it works. And now if I click in this editor, and I press uh, control R, this quick replace little widget comes up as opposed to the insert snippet link. Okay, so that's a quick look at hotkeys. Up next, let's take a look at macros. All right, got a simple topic open here with a couple of paragraphs. Now let's say that one of the things that I wanna do is uh, I want to put indentation on uh, just a big chunk of content, maybe that has multiple paragraphs, uh, images in there, lists, whatever, you know, and uh, but not everything. So maybe this paragraph right here, and then let's uh, just start typing some nonsense for a couple of other paragraphs. And then I got this paragraph down here. Maybe these three I want to be indented. Uh, so I could apply a, an indentation style to each one of these paragraphs, but that's just that's three things I got to do. And then if there's a whole bunch more, I've got to do indentation for all of those. So I can wrap these in a div tag, div. And uh, it's very simple. That's just a container, basically. So the way that you would do that is on the home ribbon, you click this button, and I'm going to select div and click OK. Now these three paragraphs are wrapped in here. Not this one, but these three are. So I could apply a style to this div right here, and it would affect all of the content in it. And I've already created a style class called um, div indent, I believe. And I can, yeah, it's right here. You can see it's indented a little even here in the menu. Click that, and it indents it, all right? So anything that's in that div is, is going to get indented. All right, so maybe I do that a lot. 
and I want to just make it a quicker process. I'm going to undo this stuff. All right. And so I actually, looking at this, I could go, well, what if I just went into my drop down, my styles drop down, and selected div indent? Okay, well, that indents it, but I, I lose that paragraph. I've had the div, but I don't have that paragraph tag within it, and I want to keep that. All right, so I don't want to do that action. What I can do is when I select this, I can go up and click on that same button. And instead of div, I can select div indent. All right, that gets me what I want. So all I want to do is I want to record this action so that in the future, I can just do it more simply than clicking this button and scrolling down and selecting my thing. In fact, I can do it with a single, you know, just press of a key. All right, so what I'm gonna do is undo this. Now let's go to record this in a macro. So on the tools ribbon, you got your macro stuff over here on the right, record, playback, manage. Record, you gotta do that. That's how you're recording your actions. Playback, you can use that if you want. Um, I don't use it. What it does is, Anytime you create a uh, record, a new macro, name it, it's going to show up in this list and then you could select it and that action will take place wherever your, your uh, cursor is in the XML editor. But uh, I want to make this even quicker than that. So I want to associate it with a shortcut key. And that's why I'm going to use this manage option in here. All right. Now, when you record an action for a macro in the XML editor a lot, you can do a lot of stuff. A lot of things can be recorded, not necessarily everything, but a lot of stuff can. If you're not sure, I would, I would just test it out, try it, try it and see if, if it, uh, if it works for you. So I'm going to do my steps and try to get this into a macro. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to press uh, click record, and I'm going to give this a name. So div indent, let's just call it that. That's descriptive. That's what it does. Click start. So now the recording is started, and this button changes to stop right here. Now, you're not in, in any time crunch. You don't have to rush. Uh, just think, think it through. Take your time, uh, and it's going to record your actions. So first thing I want to do is I got my cursor here. In, in this paragraph, and I'm gonna to go to the home ribbon, and I'm going to select this button, scroll down and select div indent, because that's getting me what I want. It's giving me that div and the P tag in it. And if I hover over the div, you can see, yep, class indent. That's what I want right there. So now I'm gonna go back to the tools ribbon and click stop. Okay, and so once it changes back the button to record, you know you got it. And if I select the playback drop down, you can see there it is. So I could put my cursor on another paragraph, select playback and choose div indent, and there it is. It just played. But like I said, I want to make this even quicker. So I'm gonna go into my manage uh, option there. And you can see these are the macros that I've already got. And so they're associated. They don't all have to be associated with the keyboard shortcut div indent. This is the one I created isn't yet. So I can assign a shortcut. So this is similar to that file options dialog, but it's just limiting it. It's just listing all of your, uh, all of your macros in here instead of everything. So what you can do I actually am thinking I like to use the F keys, uh, but I think most of those are taken up with macros or with other things. So I'm going to use, let's say I'm gonna use F2, but I'm gonna add a control. So it's control F2. Let's see if I can do that. So I'm gonna click assign shortcut, gives me this message and it says, all right, we want you to click okay. After you click okay, then click the keyboard shortcut you want to assign to this macro. So I click OK, and on my keyboard, I select Control F2, and there it is. And it's not using anything else. I can tell by this deal down here. So now I click OK. All 
All right, so now if I want to put this into play here, let's say I just select parts of those two paragraphs right there, and I can I press Control F2, and there it is. Those two paragraphs, even though they don't mean anything, are wrapped inside this div indent. That did it. Now, another thing I want to show you is if you do go back to that file options dialog, and I'm going to go up here and select XML editor. What I want to show you is that in the list of options, all of those macros that you saw and the, the new one that I created, they're actually in here too. So I'm going to sort by option and come down here. So where are they? Well, they're playback right here. Once you start getting to playback, there they are. They're all listed, including playback, div, indent, the, Control F2, the one that I selected. Just wanted you to see this, that uh, you can control these both here and in that other dialogue. So there you go. The moral of the story is there's lots and lots and lots of things that you can do in Flare, and you can speed up the process of the things that you do a lot by associating them with shortcut keys and even go to the extent where you can just record your own stuff and associate those with shortcut keys too. I would just, uh, as you work, you just kind of identify, man, I seem to be doing this thing a lot. Well, maybe that should be a shortcut key. Maybe that should be a macro. Thanks for watching this video. Talk to you next time.